Hey folks, so today we're going to look at something called um, coastal erosional landforms. So we'll just pop the title up in the top left. Now, these are different to depositional landforms, uh, as in they are caused by erosion, not deposition. So you can find another video on my channel which has got um, how spits and bars are formed from deposition. But today we're going to look at erosional landforms, okay, and a, a little bit to do with the processes that form them as well. Now, as this is case studies, you could well be expected to refer to one. So try and remember Old Harry Rocks, which is a big stack, if you remember, in um, Dorset. Okay, that's your best case study. Okay, so to do this effectively, what we need to do is sort of draw a headland, okay, a rough headland shape, heading down to the water like this. And then we're gonna have ourselves a sort of stack over here, kind of similar -ish shape, and then a stump. Just quite a small stump will do, there we go. Lovely. Um, so as I said, here we've got our headland. Now what happens is there's a number of stages, there's five in fact stages in the process from a headland turning into a stump. And the first one is cracks appearing. So if you want to just draw, we get cracks up here at the top of the um, headland. These are formed because they're vulnerable to things like weathering. So that's uh, freeze thaw weathering, could be acid rain, could be plant roots that sort of get into the cracks in the grasses, because this, this top section might well be grassy. Uh, even our animals, you know, we see when we go to Dorset um, for our trip there, we see rabbit burrows, you know, they can burrow in and they can weaken the headland. So if we just put a little arrow here and write the word weathering, now in an exam, you'd only really be expected to perhaps talk about one type of weathering, um, but you'd certainly be expected to know what it is. So if you just put in brackets, the breakdown of rock or weakening of rock. Okay, and remember, that's not a frog, that's weakening of rock, but remember that there are different types. So, the best ones probably is acid rain, which is, remember, when the rain sort of takes in quite a lot of carbon, carbon dioxide, and it can make the rain itself slightly acidic. And the other one is biological. So that's chemical. The biological one is, as we mentioned, the plant roots and animal burrows things like rabbits, okay? Now, this is a coast study, so we need to focus on what's happening at the water as well. So if we just put our water in, lovely. Um, all the way down the headland, there will be cracks. There will be you know, weaknesses from weathering. But down here, where the water and the waves are hitting the headland, there are quite significant cracks being formed Okay, so if we just draw some of those in. And some of them can be quite wide cracks. I'm just going to fill this bit and show, you know, quite deep, deep cracks. Not quite caves, but not, not far off. So let's just write the word crack there. Okay, and it goes in order. Now obviously, over time, the processes of erosion that is hydraulic action and abrasion particularly, can really target um, this headland and it can turn things like cracks into caves. So if we just pop in a cave here, and I'm gonna write the word cave. Uh, and just to bring it to life, I know it takes a minute or so, but I'm actually gonna color it in. Now, you can get caves on both sides of headlands, but we're obviously just gonna draw the one on this side. And they can be big enough, you know, to certainly to get a person in, sometimes a few people. And it is the force of the water 
that causes these cracks to turn into caves. Water, remember, just a square metre of water weighs a tonne. So you can imagine how heavy, you know, big wave is, and certainly in, you know, succession of waves in a storm, they can have really significant, really damaging effects on a coastline, even on a headland, which we know headlands are made of more resistant rock, rocks like granite, for example. They can still be targeted and affected by hydraulic action and abrasion. Now, we need to really get those processes in there somewhere, don't we? Shall we? We'll come back, we'll write those in in a moment. Right, once the cave has broken through, and it's broken through on the other side as well, then obviously it's not a cave anymore. It turns into an arch. So I'm gonna draw quite a big arch there, and write the word arch. Okay, that's stage three. Now the archway, is one landform and you can see that quite clearly at Durdle Door so that's another very close to Old Harry Rocks Durdle Door which is a good ex example of an arch but over time you see the top of the arch the roof of the arch gets attacked by those weathering processes we talked about and eventually that collapses but if you want to just imagine that there was an archway here okay so just oh no, almost like an imaginary one, it falls and it collapses and then it leaves a stack behind. So in future, and this will happen at Durdle Door in the future, there will just be a stack here and then the processes will continue. Um, once the arch roof has collapsed, it turns into a stack. And then over time, uh, what happens is the stack is eroded and it collapses, leaving a stump. Okay, so the exact process is crack, cave, arch, stack, stump. And the two things that are really responsible for this, other than weathering, we know weathering affects, you know, the um, aerial, these are aerial processes, so things that are above the sea, but sub-aerial processes are the things that happen down here. Um, these are two types of erosion, okay, and they're really, really important that you mention these. If you don't mention them in an exam question, you can't get above the basic level answer. So the first one, first type of erosion that I want you to remember is hydraulic action. And as we said, that is the force, the sheer force of the water hitting the headland. Okay, it's really explosive, it's really powerful, carries a lot of weight behind it. And what it does is it gets into these cracks in the headland and it forces air into the cracks. And it's actually the air that's pushed in ahead of the wave that really does the damage. Uh, so that's the way to, to think about that one. And if you want to, you know, draw a wave and sort of imagine that, then hopefully that'll help you remember it. And the second process that I desperately want you to mention, this is uh, also very, very important, is abrasion. Now abrasion is, the way I think of it, it's like sandpaper. It's the sandpapering effect of pebbles grinding um, over a rocky platform. So if you imagine these waves, I'll just draw another one here, carrying in with them uh, sediment, particles, rocks and things, being thrust at the cliff that's like sandpaper is a really rough surface, isn't it? You can wear things down with sandpaper. Well, having waves throw stones and pebbles at the cliff will wear it down in quite quick fashion. So if you just put there, it's the sandpaper effect. Okay. So there you have it. You've got your five different landforms. Let's write landforms here, just in case you're not sure. And then your two types of erosion and your weathering processes. So if we just put the word processes up here.
Okay. Best of luck with that one.